Hold the size of our first-class cabins. Eastern's corporate rates, the first-class seat you've always wanted for the coach ticket you've always had. WAGA-TV, Atlanta. Cynthia Good, Ken Watts, John Doyle, Weather, Bill Hartman, Sports, and the Eyewitness News team. This is Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 11. Good evening. One of the giants of the music world dies tonight. Leonard Bernstein, the impassioned American maestro who thrilled audiences around the world with his spirited sh uh, scores for shows like On the Town and West Side Story, passed away at his New York apartment. His spokeswoman says the cause of death was cardiac arrest caused by progressive lung failure. Einstein's sudden death shocks his friends and admirers. It comes just one week after he announced his retirement from conducting. Emphysema, pleurisy, and lung infections had left him too weak to continue working. Bernstein leaves behind an incredible musical legacy. Besides hundreds of recordings, he penned scores for Broadway shows like Candide and a number of operas. Throughout his career, he tried to pass on his love of classical music to young people. Leonard Bernstein, dead at the age of 72. Who would have thought 10 years ago Gwinnett County authorities now know the identity of a man found dead near the Chattahoochee River. He is a Roswell man reported missing by his wife early yesterday morning. Channel 5's Randy Travis has our story. 37-year-old Ray McMahon had lived in Metro Atlanta for only two months. Saturday morning, his wife reported him missing. That night, his body was found off a gravel road near the Pinckneyville Arts Center in Norcross. It's thick, dense underbrush back there. The body was down a hill. Uh, briars and debris was around the body. It was very difficult to get to. McMahon's wife called police Friday night after her husband failed to return home from his office on Roswell Road. Police found his wallet and briefcase still in the office, but McMahon and his car had both disappeared. Three teenagers found the body shortly before dusk last night. They came running up the hill between those two houses there, screaming for help. One neighbor, Tony Butina, was the first to hear the commotion. This is such a quiet, safe, you know, what everybody thinks is a safe, quiet neighborhood. It's kind of, you know, frightening to find a body in somebody's backyard. He ran down to check out the boy's story and looked just long enough to realize there wasn't anything he could do to help. And he was laying on the hill with his head resting against the hill and his legs were crossed just laying there, and there was a lot of blood all over his shirt and his arm. He says McMahon was left on his back with his legs neatly crossed. Police say he suffered some sort of blow to the head. Investigators spent most of the day picking through the forest behind the neighborhood and checking the grounds near the art center. But right now, they say they have no better idea why someone would want to murder Ray McMahon. In Norcross, Randy Travis, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Authorities are still looking for McMahon's car. It is a new 1990 Honda Accord EX, champagne in color. It may still have the dealer tags on it from Superior Honda in Council Bluffs, Iowa. If you see that car, Gwinnett County Police would like to hear from you. A fierce debate tonight in Atlanta between Georgia's two gubernatorial candidates turns personal and leads to an emotional outburst. With just three weeks before the election, charges and countercharges came when a panelist asked whether women and blacks could trust Republican candidate Johnny Isaacson. That's because he voted against the Equal Rights Amendment and the King holiday. Isaacson defended his past position, saying he was reflecting the views of his district. Democratic opponent Zell Miller shot back. At some point in your life, Johnny, you've got to take responsibility for your actions. You can't blame your daddy. You can't blame your constituents. You can't blame me. In all my life, in every political thing I've ever been in, I've never seen a man stoop so low. And I just want to tell you something, sir. Please don't let that take from my time. You can say anything you want to about me, Zell Miller, but don't you ever say I blame that on my father. Zell Miller, I defended him. You know good and well because you saw the debate on TV. You've taken liberal license with everything down there in a forum where we can't pick them all apart. You can pick on anybody you want to, but don't you try and take a low shot like that. Zell? Miller did not reply to the standing ovation led by Isaacson's aides in the audience. Following the debate, Isaacson said he responded the way he did because, quote, a man who doesn't stand up for the people he loves is not a man. 
Also tonight, Isaacson handed Miller a calculator and challenged his claim that the lottery would raise $450 million. Isaacson, who also supports a lottery, claims it will generate about $200 million. That's closer to the state's figures. Ken? Police are still searching for the killer of a West Atlanta grandmother who was stabbed to death Friday night. Her live-in companion is still in shock over the tragedy and tells Channel 5's Mary Shalvargian he's puzzled at the motive. Otis Brock spent the day on the phone talking with sympathetic friends and family. He's having a hard time right now. Lily Bell Watson was his constant companion for the last 11 years. He's known her for two decades. He discovered her body Friday night. I found her upstairs, laying out up there. She was on the floor at the foot of the bed, stabbed dozens of times. I said, what's wrong? Lily, what's wrong? She didn't say anything, you know, and I know it from the, from the pregnant eyes, you know. I said, hey, Lily, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I uh, didn't say anything, so I jumped back and looked. When I looked, she was bloody all up through here and blood all around her. There was no forced entry into the house. Otis thinks Lily may have known her assailant. The killer reportedly washed the butcher knife murder weapon in the sink before leaving. Otis is puzzled at the blank response of his neighbors. Somebody had to see or hear some. The hardworking housekeeper was a popular and familiar figure in its apartment complex. She was a real sweet person, and everybody around here know this. And I, 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 who, who could anybody think would have did something like that to her? Mary Shalvarji in Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Now, police say they have no suspects in Lily Bell Watson's murder at this time. Clayton County police now believe robbery may have been the motive in the stabbing of a landlord at his boarding house. Residents found the body of 80-year-old Ford Tompkins when they forced open the door of his room at the house in Old Dixie Highway. They say they believe they became concerned because there was no answer at Tompkins' door and he hadn't been seen since Thursday. Investigators say somebody stabbed Tompkins several times. They think robbery may have been the motive since money was missing from his room. So far, police have made no arrests in this case. The American Red Cross says about 75 people remain homeless tonight after deadly floods that ravaged Augusta. The flooding from Tropical Storm Marco killed four people and caused $34 million in damage. Federal investigators now are assessing the damage in East Georgia. 34 counties have asked about emergency assistance. Only four are under consideration for federal disaster aid. Hardest hit was Richmond County, where 85% of the roads were underwater. Hundreds of people in and around Augusta were evacuated from homes and hospitals. The same storm devastated parts of New York and New England. The rain has decreased, but there's still a lot of roadway flooding in Massachusetts. Water from storm drains clogged autumn leaves. Police report flooding in low spots. Some Boston residents report five feet of water in their basements. In New York, flooding forced some train stations to close temporarily. Coming up next on Eyewitness News tonight, Israel tells the United Nations to stay out as it defies the condemnation of the shooting deaths on Temple Mount. Two of Israel's deadliest enemies tonight trying to work out a link between the Iraq crisis and Israel. And we'll tell you about the doctor's report on Chris Miller sent to the hospital tonight after that wild game against the 49ers. Stay with us. In the fading light, a cold blue haze, gay laughter, sad cries, these mark our days, the touch. The feel, the fabric of our lives, the touch, the feel of cotton, the fabric of our lives. Hi folks, how are you this Sunday? Tom Park back at Atlanta Toyota, where it's the last week of our red tax sale. Not only the 90 models marked down to move out, but also every used car during this last week. And when you buy a car or truck, get that NEC mobile cellular phone, courtesy of Budget Cellular, Pactel's largest authorized agent, no additional cost. Here's how it saves you money. Now, this is an 89 Sentra with air for $69.95. 88 Honda Prelude loaded sunroof, $10,995. How about an 87 Supra for just $12,995? Only examples at Atlanta Toyota. My sister-in-law gets up at 5 just to figure out what to wear. I say, come on, get a life. Now, my closet has the pieces to put together a great outfit at a moment's notice. I tuck this in, I put this on, and voila, I'm ready. 
time left over to change my mind five or six times, at least. Bugle Boy at Mervyn's for the clothes you love to live in. Making a splash, we're coming through. Making seafood good for you. Long John Silver, making a splash. Make seafood, do it right. Flaky and white, oh so light. You at Long John Silver's Baked Fish, Baked Supreme, or Baked Trim Scampi. Get them fast. Making a splash, Long John Silver. Introducing new tender baked chicken, only $3.99. Using strong language, Israel says it will not cooperate with the United Nations team investigating the Israeli police shootings of nearly 20 Palestinians. Israel's cabinet is asking the UN delegation to stay away from its country. Leaders defiantly reject the UN Security Council's condemnation of the killings of Temple Mount last week. Condemning Israel for the act of a fanatic Muslim mob is simply unjust, incorrect, and in my view, not even expedient. The riot began last Monday when Palestinians threw rocks at Israeli worshippers. Police first used tear gas, rubber bullets, then live ammunition. It would be like to receive one of these things is not hard to imagine. If this is hurled on your head as it was by these Muslim fanatics, it would have crushed a lot of skulls. But an Israeli human rights group today accused police of indiscriminate shooting and criminal negligence and said the government has attempted to hide the facts and mislead the public. The shooting of uh, the border police and the regular police, uh, most of it took place while there was no longer any danger to Jewish worshippers. Observers predict more violence in the streets of Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza in the coming weeks. The latest on the Persian Gulf crisis tonight, a surprise meeting between PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat and Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein in Baghdad. The two discussed what they perceive as a link between the Persian Gulf crisis and Israel. Some diplomats say Saddam hopes to gain support in the Arab world by appearing as a champion of the Palestinian cause, a move the Bush administration rejects. There is no linkage whatsoever. And so I hope that uh, Israel and the cabinet and uh, the prime minister recognize how far that the president went to make sure that the Palestinian question, the occupation of the West Bank, is not related to Saddam Hussein. What? While Saddam met with Arafat, senior Iraqi leaders carried his message to other Arab nations today. And back in this country, time is ticking away for members of Congress. They have five days left to hammer out a deficit reduction package that would cut $500 billion from the federal budget over the next five years. Denied administration officials say they are prepared to reject any plan that they don't like and to allow the government to shut down. President Bush returned from Camp David today. He is expected to face his most brutal week as president. There are many plans on the table, and Capitol Hill analysts say there is little hope of any agreement. House Democrats want to impose a surtax on millionaires and raise the income tax rate for the wealthy from 28 to 33 percent. Democrats are for uh, having people share the load and pain of uh, paying taxes. And Republicans want to preserve uh, the wealthy's atmosphere and, and certainly give them more tax breaks. Meantime, Senate Democrats say they have a middle-of-the-road approach to the budget dilemma. Some say the White House is more likely to accept. We came through the back door, in effect, by putting a limitation on deductions. And that picks up $29 billion. And that means that we have a progressive table that those making the highest income will pay the highest increase in the tax. Senator. And if Congress fails to reach an agreement by Friday's deadline, tens of thousands of federal workers could be out of a job indefinitely. Coming up next, John Doyle joins us with that all-important Monday morning forecast. And then a little bit later in Piqua, Ohio, they're getting down to the fundamentals. We'll take a brief look at a brief festival next. Arnold Palmer at home in America. 1929, that was the year I was born. The tractor, well, that came along a little later. And Pennzoil, well, that goes back to my dad. That was his motor oil. I'll tell you, you couldn't be around him long without learning the value of keeping the equipment running. And you know, everything around here is still working. Pennzoil, ever since America learned to drive. Power Buying saves, save that far more. When it comes to saving money, Power Buying will make you feel a whole lot better. That's because we buy in big quantities, and only when we get a great deal. Power Buying means savings that get passed along to you. We're buying big, we're saving too. We pass the savings on to you. Power Buying saves, save that far more. 
Opens Wednesday on Roswell Road, Marietta, and Lawrenceville and North Druid Hills Road, Decatur. One of these girls has a serious problem. If left alone, it can come between you and your teen's future. Symptoms can range from depression and withdrawal to aggressive behavior and even alcohol and drug abuse. Fortunately, this girl's parents recognize gradual changes in her behavior. If you think your child needs help, call Charter's confidential 24-hour teen line at 1-800-835-TEEN. Take the first step and call. Just like Georgia, Ohio is in the midst of fall festivals, but one in particular is catching a lot of curious stares and turning more than a few heads. It is the annual Great Outdoors Underwear Festival in Pequa, Ohio. Participants aren't running around in the chilly weather in their birthday suits, though. They're sporting the latest in sweatsuits, long johns, and a few bare essentials you'd wear on a cold winter's night. Underwear is the town's claim to fame. Pequa has been the home of 14 different underwear factories since 1886. And due to the weather, participants say the festivities will be brief. We uncover it all here, don't we? Oh, very funny. Uh, turning to weather. I don't want to jockey around Cover that. Cover that forecast. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't it nice? And it's going to be even nicer tomorrow, perhaps. Uh, it may be a little warmer than it was today. While we were making up to about 77 today, Charleston, South Carolina was tying a record high at 88. Miami tied a record high at 92. Summer trying to hang on down there. It's kind of chilly outside right now. The skies are clear at 66 degrees, humidity 58%. Winds from the southwest at 7, the barometer rising from 30 even. Our high today, 77, overnight low, 53 degrees, which is 2 degrees above normal for the day. No rainfall and none really expected for the next several days. Sun will rise tomorrow at 742, having set at 705 tonight. Take a look at the temperature. It's kind of cool. It's 66 in Atlanta now, 56 up in Rome. Got all 50s over there in Alabama. Still hanging in over Charleston, about 74 after that tying high today. Well, we've got an awful lot of clear skies, and that's why we're expecting it to be rather cool tonight. There's no cloud cover to keep the warmth near the surface, so it just radiates right into the atmosphere. Little band of clouds over north central Georgia. That's about it. General weak high pressure dominating much of the eastern third of the country right now. Cloud cover down around the Gulf of Mexico. Few showers there. There is a low in the upper atmosphere that's keep kicking up that rain, and that could spread a little into Georgia, although officially it's not in the forecast. There is a rather vigorous front that's moving through the upper midsection of the country. They had thunderstorms in Wisconsin. Eau Claire had hail about an inch in diameter. At Madison, some wind gusts up to 62 miles an hour. Some rain in Indiana, and then another brisk uh, storm moving into the northwest, bringing rain to the coast and some snow tonight in the upper elevations of the Olympic Range and into the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. Nice weather in California to match that that we're expecting here tomorrow. For tonight, we're looking for clear, cool weather with a low of about 53 and winds generally calm. When you get up on that Monday morning, look for fair skies, coolish temperature of about 60, warming to the mid 80s under mostly sunny skies during the day, winds from the northwest at five to 10. Channel five day extended forecast calls for really more of the same through about Thursday. Best chance of showers developing by Friday. Lows generally in the mid to uh, high 50s to low 60s and those highs making it back on up into the low 80s a little Looks later. Looks like a great week. You yeah, enjoy we it. We like the fall touch to this too. Can't complain. Thank you, John. Thanks. Up next, be ready for gridlock in the skies. New predictions that air traffic will double here and across the nation. And hundreds gather in Kansas to celebrate a 100th birthday and to prove they still like Ike. Drugs, they've invaded our neighborhoods, brought crime to our front doors. What better way to tell the story than to spend the night with a woman whose home is right in the middle of the battle zone? News is more than just headlines, it's the story of our lives. What concerns us, what informs us, what inspires us? We're determined to cover the news that affects all of our lives and show how it's important to you. Dedicated, determined, dependable. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. My kindergarten teacher never dressed like this. Not Miss Cranky. Gray suit, high heels. Ooh. You can dress nice and casual and still command respect. Am I all right? I'll bet she was cranky because in that suit she could never do this. Am I right? Is this a test? Partners, only at Mervyn's for the clothes you love to live in. Southern Bell presents the new phone.
I'm not touching it. Me either. Well, someone's got to. Don't look at me. Someone get Marge. Marge? Yes. How do you work this? Well, just look at the window. Not that window, this window. Oh. They're using Northstar, an advanced phone system, yet the window makes it incredibly easy to use. You've just got to see it, and this free video can show you. Get your free tape by calling 1-800-NORTHSTAR now. It's back to the launch pad tonight for NASA as they set up to try again with the shuttle Columbia. The engineers at the Kennedy Space Center spent last night rolling Columbia out of its hangar. They hope it'll pass a series of fueling tests later this month. The shuttle has been plagued with mechanical problems since April. Its attempted launch in June and September were scrubbed because of hydrogen leaks. Its next mission is to deploy the $150 million Astro Observatory, hopefully in December. A new report predicts that an air traffic jam will come early in the next century with nearly twice as many planes in the sky. That may not be good news for travel hubs like Atlanta's Hartsfield International Airport. The National Research Council report released yesterday says airports like Hartsfield will have to spend billions of dollars in expansion. Airplane manufacturers will have to come up with planes to seat up to 1,000 passengers, that report says. That's not to mention the number of air traffic controllers who will be needed to handle the expected glut of flights in the 21st century. Thousands across the nation remember Dwight D. Eisenhower today. He would have been 100 years old. In his hometown of Abilene, Kansas, more than 15,000 gathered at his gravesite. There, townspeople and even the U.S. military's top brass celebrated the life of our 34th president and World War II hero. And today in particular is an occasion to refresh our souls as we come together to celebrate the 100th birthday of a great Kansan, a great American. Eisenhower was buried in a wooden coffin next to his wife and infant son in Abilene. In Ike's birthplace, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, thousands more gathered to celebrate the life of an American hero. In sports, not such a good day for the Falcons. They lost a game. A player is injured. Well, we've got an update on Chris Miller, the quarterback. He may not be as badly hurt as we thought. I'll have highlights of the game and more in just a moment. There are times when the quality of a new car is put to the ultimate test. So in preparation for that, you may be interested in a recent J.D. Power & Associates survey in which the Toyota Corolla was named the most trouble-free car in its class. Because while there are a lot of important things to worry about in our lives, a car shouldn't be one of them. Test drive the Toyota Corolla today at your North Georgia Toyota dealers. We are entering a whole new era, the decade of positive change. Around the world, organizations have realized that you cannot intimidate human beings into productivity. The key is to let people do what they do best, whatever way works best for them. At the same time, fundamental principles of mass production give ordinary people access to powerful technology. That which was affordable to the few becomes available to the many. Mass production becomes mass productivity. The Industrial Revolution meets the Age of Enlightenment. The walls have come down. Opportunity has gone up. And your only limits will be the size of your ideas and the degree of your dedication. People, this is an exciting time to be alive. I never I don't quite know where weekends are going to take me, so I wear clothes that'll go anywhere. Pick a place on the map, pick up my husband, and we're off to Tierra del Fuego. Here, you choose. Well, wherever I end up, I know I'll look good when I get there. You, however, could use some accessorizing. It's a good look. Cherokee at Mervyn's for the clothes you love to live in. Falcons fans breathe a sigh of relief tonight. I'm telling you, Chris Miller is uh, almost the franchise on offense. Good news tonight, Atlanta Falcon quarterback Chris Miller not seriously injured this afternoon. He was trying to bring the Falcons back against the San Francisco 49ers when this happened. He dropped back the pass and the 49er defender got him in the knee. He was helped from the stadium and at first it looked pretty bad. He went to an ambulance and headed for Piedmont Hospital while the game was still going on. 
but the prognosis is good, nothing torn. He should be able to play next week against the Los Angeles Rams. Now to what happened. How about everything? Joe Montana had the best day of his career. So did Jerry Rice. 49ers remain unbeaten, dropping the Falcons 45-35. This was a game that was worth the price of admission. First place, Steve Broussard fumbled the ball. San Francisco recovered. That's when Montana went to work on his records uh, career high, 476 yards passing. There he goes to Jerry Rice, 7 0 49ers. But Miller had a good day, too. 291 yards, three touchdowns. Rison, Andre Rison had nine catches, 172 yards, and two TDs. It's his best day as a pro. Then Montana started working on Charles Demery. This one went to Rice. It's 14 to 7, San Francisco. Watch this. George Thomas blocks the punt. Bobby Butler picks it up and goes in for the score. It's a 14-14 game. But you can't keep Montana down, nor Rice. That's Rice's third touchdown of the day. Montana with his fifth TD pass. Jerry Rice's fourth touchdown pass. Montana, guess what? Need I say? Guess who caught it? Montana, 476 yards. All right, the Giants have beaten the Redskins 24-20. Third quarter, Phil Sims to Maurice Cawthorn. Finally, Daryl Green, the fastest man in the NFL, runs him down. He looked at two, didn't he? That set up Sims to Mark Bavaro, and it's 21-13 Giants. Redskins' last chance. Stan Humphreys back to pass. He's intercepted by Mark Jackson, and the victory is preserved. The Giants are still unbeaten, 24-20 over the Redskins. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are tied for the Central Division lead tonight. That's right. They are 4-2 after Vinny Testaverde led them over the Packers 26-14 today. Testaverde to Ron Hall for 15 yards here as Tampa goes up 16-0 late in the second quarter. The Buccaneers defense picked off five Green Bay passes. Wayne Haddix goes in to score. Tampa Bay beat Green Bay 26-14. The Chiefs over the Lions 43-24. Bob Galliano to Barry Sanders for 47 yards. Look at Sanders. Look out. Barry Sanders, and he might go. He had the Lions up 7-3 in the first quarter. Barry Word had about 200 yards for the Chiefs, though. Here's Barry Word for 53 big ones. And the Chiefs beat the Lions 43-24. Steelers scored 34 points today. Hey, beat the Broncos in an upset 34-17. Bobby Brista to Eric Green. Now, Brister to Green again in the fourth quarter. And this is how the Steelers upset Denver 34-17. Other scores tonight, Chicago beat the Rams 38-9. It was New Orleans over Cleveland. Houston beat Cincinnati. San Diego bombed the Jets. Raiders over the Seattle Seahawks. Phoenix 20-3 on Dallas. Lots more highlights on Sports Unlimited. Bob Tway won that Las Vegas Invitational Golf Tournament. Hit the jackpot. $234,000. Went to sudden death with John Cook. And look what John Cook does on the first hole of sudden death. It actually went into the hole. Watch it on slow motion replay. Cook's ball goes into the hole and is spit back out. Tway, all he had to do was par to win. And that was it. Bob Tway, the winner. I'll have more on Sports Unlimited in just a moment. Spit back out? Spit back out. How it does that like happen? It looks like it did. See you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. That's going to do it for this edition of Eyewitness News for Sunday, the 14th of October. For the news team, I'm Cynthia Good. And I'm Ken Watts. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Sports Unlimited next. Good night. Good night. Channel 5 Eyewitness News has been brought to you by Cotton Incorporated. For America's cotton growers, cotton the fabric of our lives.